right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the up and down matches here at the Global StarCraft II League. For those of you that are just joining us, for those of you that are not familiar with what the up and down matches are, very quickly I will tell you, if you guys are maybe watching with this with your friends, you're like, hey, you know what, up and down matches are cool, there's a thing called StarCraft, you should check it out. Um, basically, we have the Code S tournament and we have the Code A tournament, and the Code S tournament is the real, the big league, basically. Got a lot of money. Got the best players in the world. Exactly, the best players in the world. The Code A tournament is uh, a tournament in itself, um, but it's also a qualification for the Code S tournament. And if you get into the top of the Code A tournament, or if you're in the bottom of the Code S tournament, the little space in between, those players have to battle it out to see who actually goes up to the main tournament and who goes down to Code A, which is the uh, lesser tournament. So that's what these matches are today. Yeah. Five players battling it out in a group, playing round robin style. Every player is going to play every other player in the group, and whoever comes out on top, the two players with the best score at the end of the day are going to be actually going up to Code S. And I mean, yeah, it is actually you're talking about you know best players. It's also actually just a money thing. The if you are in the round of 32, the lowest part of Code S, you actually make the same amount from that as being the winner of Code A. So. Really, at, from a career standpoint, being in Code S is where you want to be. Of course, yeah. And uh, basically, the top eight players of Code A come to the up and down matches, and the last place player of each group uh, makes it to or goes to the up and down matches. They yep. don't make it anywhere. They they fall down into the abyss that is the up and down matches, where everyone fights. It's like the Gladiators Arena. Only one will exactly. survive. Well, actually, two will survive. Two will survive. Five men enter. Two yeah. men leave. Exactly. There are three groups of this. Yep, right now, Genius is at 1-1. One and one. Thinking about the uh, situation. Puzzle is 1-0. and oh. Sage is 0-1. Xenio is 0-1. And Gumio is 1-0. and oh. So the Knight is still young, but here is Xenio versus Puzzle. An important Xenio, match for Xenio, man. Yeah, if he loses this match, he's at 0-2, and, and that is almost impossible to come back from in the up and down matches. So very, very important here. Puzzle has a chance to bring himself into a good lead, though. We're going to find out who will win in just a moment here at the GSL. All right, down here in the bottom left is our Zerg player. He has a whopping 35% win rate against Protoss. Oh, yes, yes, I think Puzzle's definitely the favorite in this match. But Who's that? Who knows? Who's that favorite? Oh, this guy would be the favorite. Recently beat Lenok in the GSTL. Although we also lost to Line at WCG. Although Line's pretty good. Line is really good. I've always been impressed with Line. Line actually played back under the ID Next Line before his next one formed back in the open seasons of the GSL. And uh, he's been around a while. I've always really respected him. I hung around with the Next Clan for quite some time. So, he's a That's, pretty cool guy. I was just looking at uh, Puzzle's records here and I was going to point out and I think I had a little bit of deja vu because I think I said this last season too that Puzzle his win rate against Zerg is actually pretty good but he wins against players that aren't like the top caliber he doesn't actually win against players like you know Lucira or you know Curious he did beat you know Leenoth but occasionally you do take games like that anyway so point being even though I think Puzzle statistically is favored here I think anything can happen. Xenio is kind of like Hongen, like we were talking about earlier. He's also one of those players that, even though he's not favored, sometimes he just just wins. Sometimes yeah. he'll have a moment of brilliance and he'll beat a really good player. What so. happens with Xenio a lot in this matchup is, like I was saying, about the rivalry that doesn't really exist between Xenio and Hongen <laughs> is that Xenio will just sometimes hold things that doesn't, it doesn't look like anyone could hold. He'll just be like, no, I held it. And then he'll win games that way. Um, and then at other times, he'll just out macro people. But there's this time period between like the mid game and the end game where he tends to lose games. I feel, and I don't know. We'll see what happens in this game. We we don't know what we're gonna see from Puzzle, but he has gone for a Nexus first. His cannon is on the way now. 
even though his opponent went for a faster pull, it's not going to matter. The can's going to finish just in time here for the Zergling to come and see it and move away. Actually, didn't even see it, didn't but he knows even, it's there. Didn't even check it out. Didn't want to take a hit to find out what was going on. And Cybernetic's core going down as well. Yep. Completely walling off that cannon. Cannot be attacked by melee units. Really nice wall off the puzzle. Probably going to have to build that out a little bit more, maybe make another cannon farther out in the mineral line so he can't be harassed around the edges of the Interestingly, space. Puzzle's only taken one gas. Ooh. Oh, look at this, though. And a Roachborn going down. For oh. Is he going to see it? No. no! That probe does not see the Roachborn. Also, did find out that there was no second gas taken, so probably not Banelings in that sense, but didn't see the Roachborn, though. That's very unfortunate. And it looks like he's just going to go for a bust, actually. He's, he's not mining too much gas, so he's just going to make like a round and a half of roaches, maybe six roaches, and then follow up with speedlings, I think, and go for a little bit of a bust. Now, one thing he was able to see was that the hatchery was a little bit later than normal, mm. which indicates that the drones were not pulled from gas. So is he, is he responding to that, though? He did make an extra cannon. He has made sentries back at home. He's made one sentry. He's making okay. a second one now. His cannons are in a really good spot. He may want to make one more cannon. This is not going to be easy to hold. The forge yeah. The forge is kind of be, going to be exposed a little bit, but only of Zinio Micros perfectly. And in this case, I don't think he'll be able to do that. He's going to want to get that forge, but it's, it's going to be very difficult to do so. The core, though, may be hit as well yep. if he Micros. So or we'll he, see. Or he could go around the side and get the probes even. Yeah, that's, that's going to be the place where he needs to make an extra cannon. And in fact, he's making another pylon right there. And it looks like he's going to go right for the probes, as you said. What looks but actually, I think he can hit that core and oh, the, he Nexus can hit the Nexus without being uh, hit by the cannons. And that's actually going to be so hard for Puzzle to defend. They're going to get those sentries. Speedlings coming in here as well. They're going to force nice the sentries force back field. into a corner. A little bit of missed micro. The Roach is taking some fire they didn't need to, and the Zerglings really taking a lot of fire they didn't need to. Yeah, that probe actually blocked the Zerglings from attacking the sentries. Making another pylon here so we can start inching cannons closer to the Roaches. Oh, Stalker the gets caught here, but he is surrounded in such a way the Zerglings can't really hit him. Nice micro by Puzzle. I think he's going to hold. Puzzle. Wow, Puzzle. Cannon gets made here. He's probably going to have to cancel it. The Stalker's in a place, though, where he can do damage to these Roaches. Oh, the Nexus is so close to dying, but there's only three Roaches left. He's targeting down the Nexus, trying to kill it off at all costs. Beautiful to force health. field. The Whoa. Roaches are getting low, and it looks like Zedio is going to have to go home. He brings a ton more Zerglings. But will it matter? Nice block with the pylon by Puzzle. Oh, Two only... stalkers out now. The probes are blocking the Nexus, and that is it. He's done it. He has held this attack. Wow. There's no way the Zerglings could get in there to finish off the Nexus. And Zerglings being wasted here on stalkers. The cannon's just taking out everything. And, and that is going to be leave. game, man. That is GG. 42 yeah. probes to 17 drones. I, if I was Xenio, you would not have well, made. I, I wouldn't have done that. More Zerglings I wouldn't like have he done that did. actually, but but uh, <laughs> I, I, I think he should have just left right then when that failed because he's got to, he he should know he's in a really bad position right well, now. Well, he he's, made 12 more Zerglings, and now they're just gonna sit at his natural and hang out and talk about. Um, they don't. They're gonna say, "Well, what's the meaning of life?" You know, I am I'm here, but now I'm just sitting here. Yeah, well, I could have been a drone. Yeah, he actually shouldn't have made any Zerglings, to be honest, because he didn't use any of them in that whole battle for to any effect. Yeah, he actually killed almost a sentry and almost a stalker with his Zerglings. He kept running his Zerglings into a little choke point and just having them get killed by cannons. Now, what a puzzle is going to do to follow this up is actually going to follow up with a seven-gate timing attack, and this is actually a beautiful choice yeah, because now gonna... Zenio has to drone up to catch up, and if Puzzle just doesn't attack and he doesn't drone up, then he's going to be ahead anyways, but if he does drone up, then he's going to die. There's actually, it's a lose-lose e situation. Even if he doesn't make any more drones, there's no way Xenio can catch up, can, can can have the same production that Puzzle will. Yeah, no way. So yeah, a couple rounds of units with all those gateways, and Puzzle's just going to roll them over. Xenio is desperately trying to drone up, but like you, you know, he just has those Zerglings in the front, and that's all he has. And that's just not going to be enough. Well, Plus one is finishing here for Puzzle. He may start plus two immediately because he does have that Twilight Council up. He's researching Blink right now. The Zerglings that were made by Zenio, he's trying to use them, but the only effect these Zerglings have had so far is just run forward, a few of them die, then they run away, and uh, <laughs> Puzzle's not really yeah. phased by them. He, of course, well, it makes him a little bit more reluctant to move out, but with 
Exactly. Five cannons at his natural. He doesn't even care. <laughs> GG. CEO finally GG. I mean, he had five cans as natural. I don't even know why he hadn't moved out. If he did, he would have just killed his early as early as tried to do a counterattack. Five cannons were waiting, and they're all perfectly sim -cityed. No way, man. Yeah. There was no way. And Puzzle takes another game. He is now 2 and 0. Oh. Xenio is now 0 oh and 2. And almost guaranteed loss in the up and down matches for Xenio. And Puzzle is basically one win away from securing his spot in the third S. You know, Xenio, man, he really is the Hongan of Zerg, I think. He really is. I just can't get away from that. Like, <laughs> he made a proxy hatchery at the third base of Gumiho and tried to attack with Roaches there. And he tried to make Roaches in that game and end the game early. Yep. And he, you know, tried to use speedlings to kill almost a century and it didn't work. <laughs> Sometimes he goes abroad and beats foreigners in other tournaments, just like Hongen. Yeah. Uh, Hongen had a pretty good run in, in, Hongen had in, a really in MLG, good run. Yeah, actually, I was impressed by him. I actually have always liked Hongen, kind of. I mean, he is a Sith Lord, after all. <laughs> what? You haven't seen pictures of Hongen where he was on the Team League bench and he had his new Prime hoodie up? He was up like this and you could barely see his no. face. It was all dark. I was with Doa and I was like, Doa, I think I've come to realize a terrible truth. And he's oh, like, I what? And <laughs> I think Hongen is a Sith Lord. He's like, how can you be sure? He's not very good at it. I explained it to him, man. He is a Sith Lord. He knows the ways of the Force. He knows the ways of the dark side. Why doesn't he like... <laughs> you know, when the probe comes into his base to scout, when the drone comes into his base to scout, why doesn't he just tell it, this is not the base you're looking for, and make it go to another spawn location then? Oh, that's what Obi-Wan does, man. Sith Lords don't do that. They choke him. <laughs> Hong didn't want to choke that drone, though. He Good didn't want point. to choke that drone. That drone was no. just... He, he just wanted to threaten that drone. He said, if you come here again, I'll choke you. Hong is actually a nice Fair guy. He's, a nice, he's the nicest Sith Lord there is. The nicest Sith Lord. Yeah. That's saying a lot. Um, so the next game is going to be, I just tried to bring it up and I accidentally clicked something wrong, so I'm going to have to go back and find out what the next game is in just a moment. Oh, wait, there they are on my screen. My bad. Uh, I am Moltrap, aka Captain Oblivious. Gumiho versus Sage is going to be our next match. Uh, for some reason I'm unable to join the game, I'm going to log out and log back in here. Uh, so yes, Belshir Beach is going to be the map for this game. Gumiho on the left, Sage is on the right. Now Sage, this has got to be this is kind of a must-win situation for Sage because as I was talking about before, he's not that good at PvP. He's down one game already anyway, and he's got another Protoss to play, which he is statistically likely to lose. So versus Terran, you know Sage is actually a lot better versus Terrans. So he's kind of got to win this game, you know. To, get his games in where he's got the advantage versus Terran is his best matchup so you know in a sense this is kind of like his best chance to get a good, get a win yeah I would agree he's got to take this if he doesn't take this he has a, a not a very good chance with the rest of his game so it's going to be really difficult for him to make it out well our map is Belcher Beach it's loaded these guys are loaded they're ready to go Gumiho the towel Terran versus Sage one of our toasts favorites, and so you can take this out here at the GSL Up and Down Matches. <laughs> 